Welcome back to Not Learning Anything. I'm surprised you came back after last episode. Today we're going to learn about the awful thing that everyone knows I have an unhealthy relationship with. Bye highs! Well, and knee socks. Maybe I should have just called this tutorial long socks. Anyways, why must we learn this lesson? Why is this drawing skill so necessary to learn? Well, because everyone has thighs. Mine are just ugly. I must cover the thighs. No one must see the thighs. They're also cute. Look how cute these things are on me. These are obviously a necessity of life. So let's get some socks on those thighs. So, we're going to be going through several sections of different types of socks. Now how many socks are there in the world? Believe me, there's enough that we could go on forever. Sadly, I only have the motivation to get things done under 10 minutes. So we're going to go through these sections. Thigh highs, of course, knee socks, pattern socks, fishnet socks, garter belts, and accessories. Before we start, I do have the base legs in the tutorial already drawn. Because I don't plan on teaching you how to draw legs, we're learning socks. If you don't know how to draw legs, well, get out. Legs are necessary for socks, unless you're putting them on your arms. You be you. Before this tutorial, we need legs. So if you know how legs go, then let's go. Now, this is sort of the opposite of the rules we learned last time. Unlike dresses, which sag off of the body, socks cling to the body and create a smooth surface. You can see that by looking at real life examples, which I just grabbed these ones off of Hot Topic's website. They sell some good thigh highs, by the way. Because socks cling to the leg, they match the shape of the leg. There isn't any intense stress to create the fabric folds like dresses have. The leg here already does all the work for us. Whoa! It takes the same shape of the leg, so there's not much to draw. The parts we need to focus on are the ends. Well, and accessories too, if you're into that stuff. I do indeed love me some bows on my socks. Can't go outside without them. This is rather easy though. The simplest way I can describe it is you draw a bend. It needs to curve with the leg. Remember, the thigh is a solid object and the fabric forms around the leg, so you should curve the line accordingly. Now I'm gonna teach you such a tiny trick that every internet artist ever knows. It's called the thick slip. It'll get you all the views. The thick slip will cause every viewer to fork over their money over your adorably drawn thighs. We go up here at the end of the sock. We don't want to exaggerate our little thick slip. It must be perfect, or people will realize you're trying too hard to steal their money, or assume you have some weird fetishes and walk even farther away. So you have to draw a really, really tiny, subtle bump. Mmm, yes, love me some thick slip. So that was a very long description of how to basically draw lines on a leg. Knee socks follow relatively the same rule as thigh highs, but they're still a different type of sock. They go below the knee, Therefore, there is a different place for it to curve. You can't have the exact same curve as the thigh highs most of the time as it's on a different part of the leg. These socks give off more of an innocent feel, which is different compared to thigh highs. Thigh highs make you feel sexy, while knee socks are more pure. Kind of silly when you think about the fact that they're just the same thing, but with a few inches cut off. There really isn't much to cover in this section, you really just need to know how to apply the same rules as the thigh highs just on a shorter sock. They're both socks anyhow. We've got some socks on our legs and we're ready to go outside and wow those guys. Oomph. But wait, aren't these rather boring? Of course, there are several different ways you can decorate your socks. Stripes, patterns, frills, bows, and a lot more. We're going to be diving into this subject to teach you how to not blandly plaster a pattern onto a sock and also introduce you to fishnet stockings. Patterns, patterns, patterns. The most common one on socks, particularly knee socks, are stripes. Stripes are rather easy to get a hold of. You'll realize pretty quickly that the basics of socks and most of this lesson is follow the curve. You definitely should think about how the way that the fabric is formed affects the pattern. When a fabric clings onto the leg, it gives it a different visual than if it had many folds. When adding things such as patterns other than stripes, you're still following the same rule. The biggest problem is that it gets a bit more complicated and there's more to pay attention to. 
If you're following that rule, there really is no limit to what patterns you can use. Hearts, stars, and flowers are all very easy and simple examples. You can even get more complicated with things such as lace or gradients. And of course, everyone likes to follow clothing trends now and again. We all love a good outfit meme chart. So of course, you probably know of things like kitty socks. Those are a little different than a pattern. Instead of just lining up your small pattern to a curve, you have to curve the entirety of your drawing. Even though they look rather simple, the tricky part here is the fact that this is normally where you would put the line curve to your socks. Yet, now you have something else to replace it. Something more complicated to curve than just a line. You really need to study and piece together how this particular image would curve at the end of the sock. This is another good example of an area where you should study real life examples to figure out how this sort of logic works. Once you have that done, you can just go nuts. Just like patterns, there really isn't a limit to what you can do with these kitty socks, bunny socks, etc. Just like all rules with drawing and cartooning, you can always break those rules as well. You should at least learn the rules before you figure out what you want to break. A good example of breaking this rule would be Chowder. I'm not your they actually place the pattern in a way with the animation that not only is it flat, but it doesn't even move with the animation. It gives it quite an odd looking visual that really adds to the style, which Chowder was way ahead of its time and you totally should watch it. Anyways, along with patterns, there's a certain type of pattern that is a little more well known and definitely worth talking about. We've gone into sexual territory, get out your helmets, we've entered the sexiest of sexy thigh highs. At least that's what most people think. We all have our kinks. Anyways, this is technically a sort of sock, or even tights. Sort of like lace, but with its differences. This is actually really when we get into the motto of the show. Teaching drawing skills I barely know how to draw myself. I can only think of two times I've actually drawn these type of socks. They're just not really my thing. The lucky thing about this is that they're actually quite simple, even when they look rather complicated. It might take a while to figure out where everything goes and to make it look right, yet it has some really simple rules. Most of the time, people don't even curve them to the leg. Because of the amount of lines, if you just draw the pattern without actually warping it to the leg, it can still give you the same impression no matter how big or small the spaces between the lines are. When wearing fishnets, you are supposed to give the visual of the legs being darker due to how many lines there are. If you make the spaces too big, you can accidentally make it lighter when you don't want to. If you have a rather simple style that this doesn't seem to fit, there is a quick tip that you can fix this so that you can still draw these type of socks on these characters. All you really need to do is color it in the same way you would color in solid socks. You color it in with black or dark brown and then lower the opacity to the perfect place which is an area you'll need to figure out yourself. It's an easy way to still use these sorts of socks, yet keep that simple style you're looking for. There is one thing that, for beginner artists, I need to state right now. Earlier when I mentioned the very, very magical world of the thick slips, that mostly only applies to the end of thigh highs. Sometimes, people take it rather far. They try to add such a thing to the fishnet stockings with practically every single little space. It's not very often that I see someone do this, as it takes a lot of time anyways, but sometimes people really try to push it. This not only ruins simplicity, if that's what you're going for, but it is also extremely distracting from the rest of the drawing. Just like with the original talk about the thick slip, pushing it too far can result in some weird, often fetishy looking visuals. I mean, I'm not here to judge if that really is your fetish, but we're here to learn how to draw correctly. Drawing DeviantArt fetishes is a whole different world of learning. Still think those socks look rather boring? Well, fear not, we have the solution. Socks are best with the accessories attached. Just like patterns, the accessories you can add are rather limitless. The most you need to know is where to attach them on the thigh highs and how you add them to said spot. The ones we'll be focusing on for a quick second would be bows, frills, which we've talked about before, and garter belts. Garter belt? Don't you mean that character from Panty and Stocking? Yeah, I didn't know that garter belt was a literal thing either. They're apparently those things that keep your thigh highs up because they keep sliding down. They also add some odd sex appeal. Maybe it's the thought of the thick thighs not being able to hold up those socks. <laughs> Anyways, frills! There are two different ways frills tend to be on socks. Mostly knee socks. Either they can be light frills, where they're not too close and stressed, or they can be normal frills, which are attached to a small ribbon clung close to the beginning and end. 
We already learned frills and such in the last episode, so check the description to learn more about those in depth. And bows. No socks are complete without bows. My personality is literally just bows. I would go more in details with these, but I do plan on covering these in an episode soon. For now, I'm gonna focus on where it goes on the sock, because it can go anywhere. They can go on the side of the sock, on the front of the sock, or even have several bows going all the way down the sock. All the bows. Never enough bows. So many bows. Eh. This was more just a section to tell you what things were, with a small piece of information about each one. The possibility with socks are endless. Once you've mastered how these work, then you can really do anything. And that's it! We're done! I hope you learned something, but don't tell anyone you did or I'd get told off for false advertising. I hope to see you back with your new thigh highs. Buh bye Fade to black. Wait, was I supposed to read that?